Hi guys, and welcome back to the first official Jesus Chasing Club message. Man, I'm so happy and blessed to be able to have this opportunity to speak in your life today, and I hope you guys really receive something from this first message. Um, this is actually not the first time I've recorded this video. I recorded it a few days ago, and I don't know, I just had this feeling about it, and the, the Holy Spirit has definitely <laughs> changed my message around a little bit, and there's just so much more that I wanted to say, so I've decided today to re-record it. So yeah, so I'm here today, and I just wanted to talk today about who is Jesus. As we know, it was just Christmas. As you can tell, I still have my Christmas decorations up, but um, Christmas is a holiday that we, or that majority of people celebrate, and even if you're not a Christian, most people know Christmas um, it's Jesus's birthday, but who is Jesus? We don't, not everyone understands. Okay, yeah, sure, it's Jesus's birthday, but what does that mean? Who is Jesus? What is this Jesus that we talk about? And so I just want to share that with you guys a little bit today on who is Jesus. So this will actually be um, the first part of a little series that I'm doing. So this month is who is Jesus. Next month, we're going to talk about following Jesus. And the third month, so March, we're going to talk about no matter the cost. So I'm so happy and excited about this. And I cannot wait for you guys to listen in. So my theme verse for today is 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 7. In the message translation, this is so good. So it says, he wants not only us, but everyone saved, you know, everyone to get to know the truth we've learned, that there's one God and only one, and one priest mediator between God and us, Jesus, who offered himself in exchange for everyone held captive by sin to set them all free. Eventually, the news is going to get out. This and this only has been my appointed work, getting this news to those who have never heard of God and explaining how it works by simple faith and plain truth. Man, I don't know about y'all, but that verse is like, oh, that is so good. Oh my goodness. So, that is a hair. This is just what I wanted to get you guys today to know who is Jesus? What is this Jesus we speak of? How do I, how do I get Jesus in my life? So, when I first recorded this video, my whole message actually, I'm not really going off of this. Um, my whole message and my notes were about talking, kind of teaching, um, telling everyone who Adam and Eve is, going through the birth of Jesus. And all of those things are so important. Jesus is so much more than that. He's so much more than just the person who died on the cross for us. So I guess maybe I'll do like a, like a quick little run through of all of this. Um, for those of you who don't know, because before I came to church, I didn't really know anything. I had heard of Adam and Eve, but I didn't know who they were. I had heard of Mary and Joseph and Jesus and how he was in a manger, but I didn't know. I didn't know the significance or what any, like the reasoning behind any of that. And I definitely didn't know anything about Jesus's life. <laughs> so I didn't even know the difference between God and Jesus. I thought they were the same person. I didn't realize Jesus was God's son. So, and you know what? That's okay. Look where I am today. And going from someone who didn't know anything, like straight up, like really anything, to where I'm at today and what I'm doing, the only answer to that is Jesus. The only answer that I could be from someone from where I was to now, it's so hard to understand. It's so hard for me to explain to you, but it's clearly a godly thing. That is the only way. And, you know, and I hope you guys want that. I hope you guys desire that because I can promise you that Jesus can do the exact same thing in your life. He may not do the same. He may not do the same things he's done for me. And like, well, okay, let me rephrase that. He may not um, give you the same like calling in your life or he may not lead you in the same direction as me, but he can do the same things in you that he's done in me to turn your life around, to change your life to give you a hope, to give you a peace, to give you a joy, to help you, to make you feel loved and worthy and chosen and all of the things 
that I was struggling with, he took away from me. And he, that is exactly what he can do. And you know what? Maybe you have a calling on your life. Maybe God has a big plan for your life and you don't even know it. But I want you today to turn your life over to Jesus. And that might seem crazy. It might seem like, what? What are you talking about? How? Why would I ever do that? I don't know. You know, I don't know who's out there listening right now. But I can promise you that if you were to just make a bold move to just turn to Jesus, he's going to do something crazy in your life. And it's not going to make sense. You're not going to be able to understand it. And the people around you, maybe your friends, the people you go to school with, they're not going to understand it either. But I can promise you, you're going to be the most joyful person ever, the most happy person ever, the most peaceful person ever, the most confident person ever because of Jesus and because of your decision to follow him and to trust in him and to believe in him today. And I hope you guys want that. You have to want it. But, you know, you have to desire it for your own self to to receive it. But Jesus wants you. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to make this decision for you. He loves you so much. And that is the exact reason why he died on the cross for you all those years ago, was so that you can live according to his purpose for you and to live and all of the good things that he has to offer in this life and all of the supernatural things. It's not going to make sense. Like I said, um, in our natural minds, Jesus, it doesn't really make sense. It's hard to understand. It's so hard. Like, okay, sure. He was a guy. He died on the cross, but I mean, how I don't see him. I don't hear him. How do I know? Well, if you just believe Faith is believing in the unknown, believing in the things you cannot see. So like I said, it's not going to make sense to you. But you know what? I double dog dare you today to give your life to Jesus. I mean, why not? Why not try it out? Why not see what, you know, I might seem crazy. Why not see what this crazy girl is talking about and see what she means by I can have joy and peace and I can live a godly life and live like God wants me to. And he wants the best for his people. He wants the best for you. And I promise you that on everything, every single thing inside of me believes in him and trust in him. And I know that he can get you to that point in your life too. All you have to do is be bold enough to take a first step to get that salvation. And we're going to get there today. But like I said, <laughs> Maybe if I can switch gears a little bit, I just want to really show you the just, just the the power and the weight behind Jesus dying on the cross. And while yes, Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus, there was a reason that he came when he there was a reason that he was born on this earth, and the reason is what is so good so in the beginning there was adam and eve like i said they sinned and so sin came into the world this is going to be a very short version so adam and eve sinned brought sin into the world um sin grows a wedge between god and man because as sin more sin grows into your life ooh. <laughs> so here's god here's man as sins right here in the middle as more sin grows it just pushes you further and way further and further away from god um so Jesus or God knew that we needed someone to help break the barrier in between because um, after sin entered the world, um, there would be a, a high priest that would have to go and account for the people's sins or the people would have to bring a, an offering, you know, um, normally like a, an animal <clears throat> and they would have to sacrifice it and uh, to try and repay for their sins to get right with God. Or there'd be a priest mediator who would go in the temple and there was the holy place and the holy of holies. Only the high priest could go in the holy of holies. And that was where one day of year, he could only go in there one day of year. And that was when he would account for the people's sins and, you know, ask for forgiveness on all of them. So to make, this is all in the Old Testament in the Bible. So God had this plan to send his son to the earth so that he could be the ultimate sacrifice so that people, so that sin wouldn't be in between him and his people anymore, so that his people could freely talk to him and that he could have 
um, that he could give them the life that he had truly originally planned on until the enemy came in the way and that sin came in the way and broke that plan. So God sent Jesus. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary was a virgin and she was pregnant. She became pregnant, but she was still a virgin. So the only way that that could happen is clearly by a miracle. So, and God is a God of miracles. And so the Holy Spirit um, put Jesus inside of Mary. And that was the way for Jesus to come to the earth. So Jesus was born a man, 100% man. Jesus is 100% man, 100% God. Most people think he's half and half, but no, he is fully God and fully man. And that is the only way that someone could um, account for people in their sins to, in the ultimate um, cost and to be a worthy enough sacrifice to God to account for the people for their sins forever. And so that's why he had to be 100% man, 100% God, so that he could sacrifice himself for everyone for all eternity. So Jesus was here. He lived a completely sinless life and um he did it for 30 years he did he was he did nothing on like he he didn't have ministry or perform miracles or anything for the first 30 years he just lived a completely normal life so that is why jesus knows exactly what you're going through because he was a normal person he had the same feelings you had he has gone through the same trials that you may or may not be going through right now and that is why jesus can help you today because he's been there he's been in your shoes he knows exactly how you feel, exactly what you are going through. And so, and that's the importance of him being here on earth so that he could truly understand and truly feel the same things and to know the weight of what it must feel like to have these burdens and to have these mountains that seem like they'll never move and these huge obstacles. And um, so, and then for the next three years, he had his, he started his ministry, performed miracles like crazy. And, you know, just truly a, a God thing. And um, so, and then after those three years, that's when everybody like hated him. And well, not everybody, he had his disciples with him, but the world was against him because the world is kind of against Christians. Not kind of, it is. Um, the world is very much the enemy. The enemy is here to still kill and destroy, and he is going to use all the worldly things. By worldly things, I mean um, like the battles we have, maybe addictions we have, um, the depression we have, the anxiety we have, um, you know, all of these things. None of that is of God. None of it. And, but it's only because sin entered the world that we have those issues, and sin came by the enemy. So it's because of the enemy that we have issues. Bad things are still going to happen because of the enemy, but it's in those times where our faith is tested that we have to believe the most and to trust in Jesus and God the most and know that <laughs> that he's going to protect you, he's going to heal you, he's going to save you, he's going to redeem you, and you can still live a good, peaceful, joyful life because of what Jesus has done for you. So Jesus died on the cross, was crucified on the cross, and he was the ultimate sacrifice so that people would no longer have to bring that animal sacrifice. People would no longer have to go to a priest, and that priest was the mediator between for them between um, the people and God. Jesus, like I said in the verse earlier, was the one priest mediator um so when jesus died on the cross he became that oh uh, there's a verse so good let me find it mark 15 37 through 38 i never understood the weight of this but so mark 15 37 through 38 says and jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last this was when he was on the cross dying miserable and it said, then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Man, I don't know how I've missed this. I don't know how I missed the significance in this. But that veil was the veil in the um, temple that separated the holy place and the holy of holies. It separated, um, you know, where the, the priest would go and 
that thing was ripped in half because now we didn't know we no longer needed um, a high priest to go and account for our sins. We can talk to God freely, and that's why we say at the end of a prayer. That's why we say in Jesus' name because it's through Him that we are able to be right with God to talk to God freely because of what he's done for us. He came and died on that cross for you. The person out there listening today, he came for you so that you could live a good life, so that you wouldn't have to worry about accounting for your sins, which of course, yes, we do sin. We sin every single day. Even the most holy Christian will sin every single day. But now you just have to repent. You just have to say, God, I'm so sorry for sinning. Or, you know, I'm so sorry for messing up in this situation. I'm so sorry for doing <clears throat> or living by my flesh and living by the worldly things. But you just have to repent and turn from that. And you're going to be, you're right with God. And Jesus can, Jesus, his blood washes everyone. It cleanses them. All you have to be willing to do is accept him. Accept him into your life and say, okay, you're my savior you are the one who came to save me to deliver me to heal me you are the reason you are you just you just have to be so willing to say you know you are what i want in my life i want to maybe if you just want to try this out try out having a life with god in your life and turning all your worries and anxieties to him and letting him take over at the end of the day to sum this all up god wants his people saved he wants he wants everyone to be able to live the life that he intended intended for us to have because i'm telling you like i said the enemy is going to attack you he's going to steal your joy steal your peace he's going to try and make your life miserable because that's what the enemy does that is why we have so many issues in our world and we <clears throat> why we struggle so much in life. And I promise you, sure, you might think, oh, I don't, whatever, Jesus, who cares? I can get through all my things, all my issues on my own. I can get through all my struggles on my own. But I'm telling you, there is someone who can make your life so much easier, so much. So he, he will make your life so good because he is such a good god and it's so much easier to get through life with him and to get through all the obstacles because they're still going to be there i'm 100 percent they you're still going to have trials when you become a christian when you accept jesus those things don't go away that's not what i'm saying but it's someone who can help you get through if all every single situation you could ever have he has the answer he has <clears throat> He has the freedom that you need. He has it all. He offers it all. He gives it all. And it's for everyone. There's no one that isn't worthy of being a Christian or isn't worthy of having Jesus in their life. No one. Jesus, I mean, he loves the dirtiest of sinners. He loves turning those into his children. And there is no one no matter what you've done no matter what you've gone through no matter what you're maybe in right now or maybe you've been a christian before and you've gone away none of that matters at all jesus loves people and he wants everyone saved and he wants you to accept him today oh in my next video i'm gonna go a little bit more into detail about the things that i talked about because i'm talking about following jesus I'm going to go in more detail on how he can save you, how he can heal you, how he can deliver you, how he will protect you, how he makes you worthy. All of those things is what I'm going to be talking about next. But I just want you to know that this is who Jesus is. This is his life. This is what he does. He came to this earth for you today, for you. Whoever is listening, he came for you to set you free, to let you live a, a life in freedom and to live just a, the best life you can ever live and i promise you that today it might seem crazy i know it's gonna seem crazy you're gonna think i'm crazy for 
saying this today, but why not try it? I mean, this is the new year, isn't it? I know everyone's all crazy about making New Year's resolutions and all that. I'm not. I don't think you need a new year to be a new you. I mean, there's nothing wrong with setting goals for yourself. I, I mean, I've set so many spiritual goals, but that doesn't mean that I'm, oh, a new me, new year, new me. No, yeah, no. You don't need a new year to be a new you, honey. But, um, so, <laughs> so, I mean, I know everyone's all crazy about these New Year's resolutions. Why not make Jesus a resolution? Why not be that bold and just try it out? I mean, what could go wrong? Seriously, what could go wrong? And I promise you that if you were to do that today, you're going to see what I mean. It, I can't make it, I can't make it make sense. Honestly, I can't explain it. I can't understand it for you. It's it's hard to explain. There really are no words to explain. But the things that have happened in my life and the things that I've seen happen in other people's lives, people set free from addictions. I mean, drug addicts set free and no longer dealing with these issues. Um, alcoholics set free. People um, with cancer, no cancer anymore. People sick about to die no longer anymore people literally like about have taken their last breath and come back to life i mean there's just no there's no explanation for it but that's exactly what jesus does and if you would just have if you would just have the boldness to believe that today and to just say okay yeah yeah, I'm going to try this. I want Jesus in my life. I want someone who can help me get through anything. Someone who can take my worries and my my pain and my stress from me. Jesus is your is the answer. I'm telling you that he is the answer, the one and only answer. There's so many things that this world has to offer you like I like drugs, like alcohol. Um those are the things that this world has to offer that so many people struggle with and deal with by trying to fix the issues they have on side of them, the issues that they're going through. And I'm telling you, that is not what God wants for you today. That is not what he has intended for his people. That is so much the enemy and so much of him trying to make you struggle in life and trying to make you. Oh my gosh, I really hope you could have heard me this whole time. I didn't know my hair was on the speaker. Jesus, please have words. Oh no. Um, but Jesus is the answer that you've been looking for. That was what I was missing in my life. I knew there was something missing. I just, I didn't know what it was. And then I started going to church and I found that Jesus is the answer. He is exactly what I was missing in my life. And he wants that for you today too. And I want that for you so much. I want you to see what all this crazy talk I'm talking about is about. And once you accept him, you're going to understand, okay, she wasn't that crazy. Things are starting to happen in my life that have never happened before. Things are going to become um, just so good in your life because Jesus is going to protect you. He protects his children. He's going to save you and to redeem you and to help you get through this life and be that person that you need, that person to lean on. He is for you today, and I promise you that with every single thing inside of me. It sounds crazy. You're like I said, you're gonna think I'm crazy. I don't care. I really don't. If this helps someone today, then I've done everything I needed to do because my ultimate goal is just to give back what I've received. And if it wasn't for Joy, um, a girl in my sophomore year of high school, we had a class together. If it wasn't for her being bold enough to invite me to come to church with her, I never would have met Jesus. And you know. Maybe this is too much for you. Maybe you just need to come to church first and to just be in church, be in the atmosphere, and then you'll see what I mean by who Jesus is and what he'll do for your life because that is definitely the first step is going to church. Well, actually, you know what? No. The first step is the sinner's prayer. How about everyone? I don't care if you think I'm crazy. If you've listened this far, clearly you must want it. Okay, so everybody say the sinner's prayer with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask for forgiveness today. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for all the times that I've messed up. But I commit my life to you today. I believe 
that your son died on the cross and rose again, I welcome you and invite you into my life today. I receive you today and I proclaim you as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for the bloodshed. Thank you for your son. Say, I trust and I promise to follow you today. So thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. You know what? There you are. There you have it. Today, you are free. Today, you have accepted Jesus in your heart. Today, you are saved. He is your Savior. And I, um, like I said, I, I hope you receive that today. I hope there's someone out there that I helped today. If I didn't, it's okay. Um, but I really, I, I feel like there's someone out there because I know that this world needs help. We need help. We are, there's been so many things that we've been dealing with and struggling with and the enemy has been just attacking us. And I know that there's people who are desperate for something more, desperate for Jesus. Maybe you've heard of him, but you didn't know how do I get him in my life? Well, there you have it. Now you have him in your life. Now you're saved and now you're his, now you're God's child and message me if that is something that you have done, taken serious and done for the first time today. And I will help you. I'll help you get to where you need to be. Jesus will take the dirtiest person and make him clean. And the only way he does that is by his blood on the cross. And that was the ultimate purpose for God sending him into this world was for you so that you could live. And I hope you believe and trust in that today. And I just love you guys. And I want to help. I want to help you as much as I can. And just, I just want to give you what I've received. And that is my ultimate goal behind this. And to just get you to know who is Jesus. And I'm telling you, once you know who he is, you're going to want to chase after him with everything inside of you because i know that's where i am at in my life everything i give to him in every single way and that's my vision behind this so i love you guys um if you need anything feel free to message me like i said if you've listened this long clearly you're interested and you want more so yeah um i love you thank you for listening and stay tuned for the second part coming in february um the first monday in february talking about following jesus and we're going to dive more in detail on how we can do these things for you so yeah so let me just pray father we just thank you for today lord i pray for everyone who's listening father that they would accept you into their life today father that they would look to you trust in you believe in you that they would take that bold move to do those things and um i know it's not going to make sense it, it won't make sense but we just trust in you and we just decide to live a year with you in our lives and just see where it can go. And um, I just pray peace and prosperity and healing over everyone listening and just um, that they just, that they know that they are 100% your child, that there's no questions, no worries, no hesitations, but they're yours. I pray that for those who accepted you today, Father, that they, um, that they desire to know more, to um, to try and grow closer to you and then they take the right next steps that they're just bold enough to do that father and that someone can help them get to where they need to be father we just thank you and in jesus name amen so i hope you guys um enjoyed that message today i know whether this goes anywhere whether you come to church or not i know i planted a seed in your life today and um, that was exactly what I needed. And I'm so thankful for the people who did that for me. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yet again, my hair was on the microphone. No, oh, no. But, oh, wow. 37 minutes. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, um, I think that's it. I don't really know. Thank you for listening to the first official Jesus Chasing Club message. Peace.